Come on. All right, Shalom. You know, first and foremost, I'm going to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rachakodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. A peace and salutation to the Akim to the elect that are scattered throughout the four corners of this earth, you know, pushing the truth out, you know, and sincerity and in truth. You know, to, the, today's lesson is basically going to be about, you know, basically that the, the prophets of old are the prophets of the day. All right. And what I mean when I say about by that is uh, basically what did what did the ancient prophets do? All right. The ancient prophets, they were men set up by the most high. All right. Like you got Jeremiah, you got Isaiah, you got Jonah, Habakkuk, Joel. You know, these were men set up by the Most High. And, you know, and other men, all right? But these were men set up by the Most High to speak His Word, all right? To prophesy. Right, that's what prophets do. They prophesy. But prophesy means to speak before, all right? So they basically speaking something, speaking of something before it happens, all right? Letting whoever, whomever they're talking to that it is going to happen, all right? And this leads me to my first scripture. My first scripture, uh, Jeremiah. Twenty-eight and eight. The prophets that have been before me and before the of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. It said the prophets that have been before me. This is like the prophets that I have named. All right. Ancient prophets. They was way before us. And it says that they prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and pestilence. So the prophet that lived way before us prophesied against great kingdoms, like a great kingdom back then was Babylon. All right. It's so prophets, you know, came up against these places. All right. With through speaking, basically. You know, letting know that this kingdom, you know, that the kingdom is going to be destroyed, what the Most High is going to do to the people. All right. And basically, that's that's the same thing that we're doing today. All right. Because America is a great kingdom, isn't it? You know, this is a great kingdom. All right. And you see us. All right. What I mean by us is the men of Great Millstone, right? From the apostles and the elders on down, you know, we come out and we prophesy against this place. All right. And you have other camps, you know. It's doing the same thing, you know, other men, I should say, that's teaching the same doctrine that we teach. All right. They're doing the same thing that we're doing. You know, they they, they, they speaking against this place. All right. And why is that? You know, why is it that we coming out doing the same thing that the, that, that the old prophets have done? All right. Because that we are those same men coming back. All right. We are those, we are those men, Jeremiah, Isaiah, you know, like I named Obadiah, all right, Daniel. All right, they're back. You know, they're back prophesying, all right, pushing the word of the Lord. All right, because of what does the scripture say? This is uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 32. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. Meaning, if you was a prophet, all right, that lived back then, all right, that means that you are going to come back in that, in that same lot. All right, you're going to come back as a prophet, you know? So what it said in Jeremiah 28, the prophets that have been before me and before the of old, those same prophets are today. They're back today. All right. You know, they just because reincarnation is in the Bible. It's basically what that scripture is saying. It's speaking of reincarnation, which reincarnation means back in the flesh. I right? read back in carnation flesh. All right. So back in the flesh. All right, so the spirits of those prophets are back in the flesh. All right, as many as many accounts in the scriptures that can prove that. All right, and I have some, you know, got some scriptures, a couple of scriptures lined up. You know, I'm not gonna go deep into the topic, but I just got a couple of scriptures speaking on it. All right, so first scripture because I I spoke on Daniel, right? This is uh, and Daniel, all right, he was a a prophet, all right. This is uh, Daniel 12, because right, this is something that the Most High, he told Daniel. Daniel 12 and 13, but go thy way to the end be, for thou shalt rest and stand 
and stand in the lot at the end of the days. All right, so he told him that he was going to rest. What, what does rest mean? All right, it means to be dead. All right, because you're going to the count, you know, of Lazarus. All right, when Yahweh shot, he rose up Lazarus. Before he rose up Lazarus, he told the disciples, said, look, Lazarus is asleep. All right, so when he told them that, they were like, oh, so if, he, if he's basically, roughly paraphrased, if he's sleep, then we ain't got nothing to worry about. Then he was like, Lazarus is dead. All right, so sleep basically means to die or to be dead. So he said, but go thy way to the end be for thou shalt rest or die. All right, and it says, and stand at thy lot in the end of the day. So how is he going to stand in his lot at the end of the day if he was dead? You know, how is he going to do that? You know, what was the Lord speaking of? All right, did he lie to him? No, he was saying that he was going to be back upon earth, all right, after he died. And he's going to come back prophesying, all right, in his lot, all right, because he, he was a prophet during this time, all right? So he's going to come back doing the same thing, just like the, the scripture in 1 Corinthians said, the spirit of the prophets are subject unto the prophets. All right, same thing that, that Yahweh Shah told John in, in the book of Revelation, right? The same thing that was said unto John. All right, Revelation... Um, 10 verse 10 it says and i took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up all right his book is talking about the scriptures right it says and it was in my mouth sweet as honey and as soon as i had eaten it my belly was bitter and he said unto me thou must prophesy again before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings all right so when did when did john do this all right when did he prophesy, you know, again, all right, before all these people, like the scriptures just said, because John was up in age, and he, there's no record that he ever got off the Isle of, the Isle of Patmos, all right, to go prophesy. So when, when was this fulfilled? You know, that's talking about in these times, John's going to be back in these times prophesying unto all nations, all right, Pushing his word on to all nations because our people are scattered throughout all of these nations. All right. So that's why we are teaching amongst all of these nations. All right. That's how John was going to prophesy again. All right. And the reincarnation when he was back in the flesh. All right. Basically telling him that, look, you're going to stand in your life at the end of the days too. Just like, just like the most I told Daniel. All right. You know, and uh, you know, next scripture. This is Matthew sixteen. I started thirteen. It says, "When Yahweh came to the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I am? The Son of Man I am.' All right. So he asked his disciples, he's like, Who people? Who people say I am? All right. What is the people saying about me? Who they? Who who do they think I am? All right. Basically." You know, and they said, some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elijah, or it says Elias, or it's a Greek way, but it's Elijah, and others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. All right, so they mentioned Elijah, they mentioned John the Baptist, Elijah, Jeremiah, they said, or one of the prophets. Now, how could this be possible? How could the Lord, Yahweh Shah, how could he have been one of these prophets? Why would they even say something like that? All right, because the people understood reincarnation. All right, because Elijah, Jeremiah, these were men that lived way before Yahweh Shah's time. All right, way before the Lord's time. So how could he be one of those men? All right? Because you got the scripture on Elijah, on Elijah all right, in Malachi. All right? This is, um, because they mentioned Elijah, right? This is Malachi 4 and 5. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. He shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So the most I said, he was going to send Elijah. Now, Elijah was already dead and gone All right, when, when, when the most I said this. 
All right, so what time, during what time period was he going to send Elijah? All right, when was Elijah going to come back? All right, because he was dead, you know? So how was he going to come back? This is um Luke. Luke 1 and uh, 13. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zacharias, for thy prayer is heard, and thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. Right, so this is speaking on John the Baptist. It says, And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Spirit, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn the Lord, shall he turn to the Lord their power. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. All right. To turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. All right. So like in Malachi, he said he's going to send Elijah the prophet. Like I said, Elijah was already dead and gone, right? So how did he come back? When John was born, the scripture just said that he shall go before him all right, in the spirit and the spirit and power of Elijah. So this is what this is when Elijah was sent back on earth. All right, it says to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children. Man, basically saying the same thing Malachi four, four and five and six said. Man, all right, you know. So if the Most High is really dealing with you, all right, how about you start dealing with you? It, it it would click in your mind that okay, look, this is talking about Elijah. This is when Elijah came back. All right, this is when Elijah was sent back into the flesh. All right, this is when that that spirit. I should say that was any Elijah was sent back into into flesh, or into a different body, into a different lifetime as John. All right, because Yahweh I said it plainly who who John was. All right, and this is um Matthew. This is Matthew uh, eleven. In eleven, he said, "Very last time to you among them that are born of women." There had not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence, and the violence taken it by force. For all the prophets in the law prophesied until John. And if you receive it, this is Elijah, which was for to come. So he said, so he's speaking on John the Baptist. He said, man, look, all right, if you can get it, if you can understand it, you can understand it, bro. All right, that's, that, that's Elijah, man. All right, so if you can get it, that's Elijah. That's what he told him. This, that, that's, that, this was Elijah. This is what the scripture was talking about, Malachi 4 and 5, when he said, you know, he's breaking things down to him, you know. When the scripture said that the Most High said he was going to send Elijah. All right, that's what he was talking about. He was talking about John. You know, that's what he told him. All right. We say if you can if you can re receive it, all right. So he wasn't forcing on him to believe it, but like, look, this is what it is, all right. This is a, this this is when the disciples understood it, all right. This is Matthew seventeen and ten, and, and his disciples asked, saying, "Why then the scribes say that Elijah must first come?" And Yahweh answered and said unto them, "Elijah." Truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elijah is come already. Right? It says, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer unto them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So he tell, he let them know, look, Elijah came already. And they did unto him whatever they wanted to do. If they be ahead of them, man. All right. So the disciples were like, oh, shit. He talking about John. Then they, they understood it. All right. So the prophets came back, bro. Our spirits come back. This is not our first life. You know, our first time, you know, being alive. All right. We were living back then. All right. The prophets are right, basically this is what I'm dealing with. The prophets because all people are reincarnated, but. Basically, I'm going to the prophets on this lesson. All right, the prophets come back. All right, reincarnation is in the Bible. The prophets have been coming back continuously. It, it wasn't a period of time it just stopped. No, it, it, the prophets always came back. You know? 
This is how the Most High created things to be. All right. You know, that's really, let's see, you know, I didn't want to make too long, about 15 minutes in. All right. So, you know, with that, I'm going to say shallow one.